Now using this as our notes on the back or on a separate piece of paper, and you can staple it, we're gonna do what I call 55B, and we've changed the directions here. So it says, Mr. Vigu claims that graduation rate is 93%. Pretty similar here to, they claim the delivery rate was 90. And now, if we set the sample size of 100, why is this not enough? So that's something that's a little bit different in this question. So I'd like to just point out um, some basic notes uh, and discussions we had. The law of large counts tells us that when we have categorical data, n times p must be greater than or equal to 10, and n times q, that's a notation he used. Oh, excuse me, you couldn't see that. The large law of count states that when we have categorical data, um, we need n times p to be greater than or equal to 10, and n times q, that's the complement, to be greater than or equal to 10. So that we can ensure that the shape of the sampling distribution and so that's of, of p hat, is approximately normal. So in this case, we notice that if n is in fact 100, and p is the claim, 0.93, then n times p would be 100 times 0.93, which would be 93. And there's no problem there. That's greater than or equal to 10. But then when I take n times q, or the complement, 100 times 0.09, so that would mean 7% of people don't graduate. We're only expecting seven people to not graduate, and that's not greater than or equal to 10. So for the purpose of um, wanting to utilize normal approximation data to find probabilities, and that's what we're trying to do here, we need a larger sample size, and that's why it's not really enough. Okay, so now, part B, they used a sample size of 200, and we found 174 graduates. What's the probability of observing a sample proportion within 5% of that information? So we still predict that this would be uh, the average. So whatever proportion, which is 93. And so 5% on either side would just be to add 5%, so 0.98, and subtract 5%. So that'd be 0.88. So they'd asked us to find the probability of observing a proportion in our sampling data that falls within 5% of the mean. Okay, so I think we can do that, and we can find the area of the curve as long as this is normal, so let's go ahead and state, plan, do, conclude. So state, I'm just gonna restate the question. And I'm going to do it like he did. What is the probability that it falls within 5%? So that's between 0.88, the probability of the sample to fall between 0.88 and 0.98. And this is basically saying what my picture is saying. So I go to my plan. My plan is I know that the sampling distribution of p hat when my p is 0.93 and my n is 200, the shape, excuse me, hopefully you can see that, the shape of the distribution of the p hats should be approximately normal as long as certain conditions are met.
here we do n times b, and now we have 100 times 0.97, or excuse me, 0.93, so that's 93, and that's greater than or equal to 10. And n times q, oops, I wanna do 200. Oh, I gotta change, right? I changed the facts here. So that'd be 93 times q, right? 186. So they did change the problem a little bit. And now n is 200, and then that's uh, 0.07. So 200 times 0.07. So I'm expecting only 14 people not to graduate. And aha, that is greater than or equal to 10. So the law of large counts has been met. I also need to be able to have the 10% condition met, or I can't use accurately the, the spread calculation, and I need that. So the center, mu p hat, is equal to p, which is 0.93. And my spread, sigma p hat, is equal to p times q over n. So that's 0.93 times 0 0.07 over 200. We've made our sample size bigger. So it is slightly different. So when I calculate that, I get a standard deviation of 0 0.18. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little asterisk there. This is all dependent on an assumption. So they didn't really tell me how many kids are in this high school. Um, so I'm assuming the school has at least 2,000 students, okay? We don't really have 2,000 students, but this will work if we assume that. So where did I get that? It's called the 10% rule. So you take 10 times n, so that's 10 times 200, and that's where I got the 2,000. So 10% condition is met. Okay. Now, I got everything I need, as long as those two conditions are met, and it sounds like it is. So now I'm gonna do my do. So tape, state plan do. And now that my normal conditions are met, I'm gonna do normal CDF, lower bound, 0.88, upper bound, 0.98, mu, 0.93, sigma, 0 0.018. So this part looks very different. All those numbers are totally different numbers than I got the last problem. Okay, so we go to stats, distribution, normal CDF, because I want cumulative, lower bound, upper bound, mu, Standard deviation. Enter. Okay. So that's a really big number. It looks like I'm very sure that, um, we would fall within that probability. Okay, so do we have evidence? Should we believe Mr. Vigue's claim? Well, it looks like almost every piece of data we would collect, 99.4% of all the data would fall between there, and he claimed 93. So it looks as if that's perfect because let's see what they, they got 174, right? So actually, we may need to calculate what they in fact got. So let's go ahead and figure out what was our p hat in the problem. Our p hat here was 174 out of 200. So now that I changed the denominator from 100 to 200, you do have to do one more extra step, 174 divided by 200 is, oh boy, 87. So when we took a sample size of 200, we only found uh, that 87% of the people in our sample 
and this falls outside this range. Oops. So we actually did collect evidence that it might call into question whether his claim of 93% is in fact correct. So I'm gonna to get to my conclusion here. The probability of observing a sample proportion within 5% of the true graduation rate of 93% is about 0.9945, okay? And answering the question, should the claim be believed? We found one minus that, so one minus 0.994, so less than 1%, so no. Don't believe the claim. Thanks for joining us.